let's first just ask ourselves, where, where does anatomical information come from in the first place? So this is a cross section through a human torso. You can see the amazing order. Everything is, you know, in the right place, the right size, the relative to the, to the right thing, whatever. It's all here. It's pretty consistent. We all start life as these embryonic blastomeres. Eventually you get this. Where does this actual structure come from? People are tempted to say DNA. It's in your, it's in your genome. But we know what DNAs encode now. DNAs don't encode any of this. They encode the, the tiny molecular level hardware that every cell gets to have. They don't directly specify shape any more than uh, the genome of the termite specifies directly the structure of the nest or the genome of the spider specifies where um, all the connections are going to be in the web. So we still need to understand how do groups of cells know what to build? How do they know when to stop? If something is damaged, how do we ask them to repair it? So how do we communicate novel goals to them if they don't already do it? And as engineers, we can ask, we can go further and we can ask, okay, what else is possible? What else can the same cells be made to do? That same hardware, right? So this is the beauty of software is that it gets the same hardware to do different things. What we wanted to do was to take inspiration from the one uh, clear example uh, that we know where a group of cells has a goal and is able to execute on that goal. And that's, those are brains. So we know that what nervous systems are really good at is storing uh, targets, for example, in three-dimensional space and guiding bodies to achieve those targets. And so, so here we have a good example to learn from where groups of cells can represent future goals and can minimize distance from those goals to meet them. So we kind of know how this, at least some of this works in the brain. This group made this amazing video of a zebrafish brain living, uh, you know, and, and thinking about whatever fish think about. And then there's this process of neural decoding, the, pro the project that aims to read all this electrophysiological activity and decode the cognitive state of the animal. So what are the memories, the preferences, the, um, the, the goals, uh, you know, the plans, whatever this animal can do. The idea of neuroscience is that we could, if we knew what we were doing, we could decode all of that from the electrophysiological activity. So here you have a merger of, of something very interesting. You have a physical network that ostensibly obeys the laws of physics and chemistry, but what it actually does is represent very abstract memories and goals and, and, and so on, right? So, so this, is, this is kind of the, where, where the rubber meets the road for, for, co for embodied cognition. But it turns out that this amazing architecture is ancient. Evolution discovered the beauty of electricity for these kinds of things very long ago, not waiting till um, nerve and muscle came on the scene. It was discovered actually around the time of bacterial biofilms. Every cell in your body has ion channels. Most cells in your body have these electrical synapses. They all run these electrophysiological networks. And so what, what we've been doing is running this process of neural decoding. But instead of uh, asking, what does the brain think about? We've been asking, what does the rest of your body think about? Quite literally. So the question is, what did these things think about before they thought about moving you through three-dimensional space? 